you've talked about the fact that potentially people can carry or even transmit the virus even if they're vaccinated. Does that mean we could have COVID circulating in our communities for years because even protected people could be carrying it around and giving it to each other? Theoretically, yes, but I don't think that's the case because what I think, and I don't know yet for sure, but I think what will happen though, even though people who get vaccinated and get infected without symptoms would likely have such a low level of virus in their nasopharynx that they would very inefficiently, if at all, transmit it to anybody else. I don't know that, but I think that's where we'll be going. Let's talk about the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. The results today indicating it's about 72% effective in the United States, obviously significantly lower than the 95% effectiveness from Moderna and Pfizer. Do we need the J&J vaccine for U.S. rollout? I think it's value added for the following reason. One of the things that might get lost in the numbers is that when you look at the protection against serious disease, it's high. It's 85% or more. And in fact, if you look at hospitalizations and deaths, there really were none in the vaccinated group. So even though the number makes you raise your eyebrows and say, well, there's a big difference between 72 and 95, practically speaking, if the only thing you're worried about is keeping people out of the hospital and not getting people seriously ill, there clearly is value added with the Johnson & Johnson. You've mentioned a potential return to normalcy or some semblance of it by fall. But of course, now we're looking at some dangerous new strains um, that potentially these uh, vaccines are less effective against. Do you believe these strains are potentially going to delay our return to normalcy into next year? It is conceivable that if the vaccines that we have don't do a reasonably good job in, in suppressing those that we might take a bit longer to get into herd immunity. The one thing that was positive news in some sobering news that mutants do occur is that we can pretty be, be pretty much nimble in modifying vaccines like the mRNA and even the ADNO to make them address directly mutants like the South African mutant. But are you worried about keeping up given how many strains we're already looking at? Well, you know, I wouldn't say worry, Gabe. I say I take it really seriously and we gotta be prepared for it. I believe that once you get a massive amount of people vaccinated globally, one of the best ways to prevent viruses from evolving into mutations is to dampen greatly the level of virus replication in the community. So viruses are not gonna mutate unless they're replicating. So if you can get the globe vaccinated, and that's the reason why we're all in this together and you have to have a global vaccine effort, if you can bring the level of virus replication at the global level very low, you will blunt the evolution of mutants. We've seen the CDC report indicating that schools in general, pretty low transmission happening there. In your opinion, should all states start vaccinating teachers right now in order to reopen schools quicker? Well, pretty soon teachers as essential members of society will be vaccinated. So I think in some places we're already there. Some states have already graduated into 1B. But do you think we should be rushing to get that done? You know, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't want to make that opinion. I believe that's a reasonable thing to seriously consider, Gabe. I've always been of the opinion that teachers, for so many reasons, are essential to the entire effort. You get them vaccinated. They feel safe. They won't be hesitant to come back to school. The children will be in school. That will be better for society. I know it's tough enough to get people to wear one mask, but a lot has been made about the potential for double masking. Do you believe people should be double masking if they can? word should out from that and say that the CDC recommends that you wear a mask. A lot of people are putting in on two masks. I've done that myself. And the reason is you can be common sense and say, if it's a physical barrier, maybe I'd feel more comfortable if I had two physical barriers. There's no evidence that yet there may be accumulated and the CDC will react accordingly. The reason why the CDC hasn't changed the recommendation is that they don't have the scientific evidence to say that two are better than one. 
But if a person wants to put on two masks, I see no reason to tell them not to. The caseload appears to be dropping, trending in the right direction. Do you believe this could be the start of the end of this as the vaccine's rolling out? Or do you think those numbers, the dropping caseload, is a bit misleading? I don't think it's a bit misleading, but I think there's going to be a lag before you see decreases in hospitalizations and deaths. If we can keep the numbers going down and we could stay a step ahead of the mutants, I think we could conceivably see that come down and down and down as more and more vaccines get rolled out. Because as we get into February, March, April, May, and June, you're going to have a lot more vaccines that are going to be put into people's arms. And that's the thing that's going to keep that trend going down. We've heard from people who are concerned about side effects, things like that, from the vaccines, asking how to prepare. Do you think people should be taking Tylenol, any medication, to be ready when they're getting vaccinated that day? You know, I'm not sure about pre-medication, but I think if you get, feel a little discomfort, I know people have been talking about, well, you don't want to take any medications at all. But I, quite frankly, as a physician I, and an immunologist, I really can't see any harm in taking a couple of Tylenol if you have some aches. Uh, a New York Times op-ed came out, health officials saying that they think the U.S. needs to reassess their vaccine strategy, um, that we need to get first doses into as many arms as possible, particularly vulnerable people, and then worry about the second booster shot later. Do you agree with that analysis? Yeah, I think that's exactly what we're doing. And we're getting closer and closer to doing that and not having vaccines sitting around waiting and doing nothing with them. That works only if you have confidence in the steady cadence or supply of vaccines that will come in and essentially guarantee that you'll have a second dose. So there's two ways to guarantee it. One is to put them aside and don't do anything with it until you're ready. And the other is to have a supply system that is confident enough and reliable enough that those doses will come in. Now, you've talked about how many doses that we could have hundreds of millions in the next few months, but it takes time to produce them. Are there any tools that the government could use, like the Defense Production Act right now, in order to produce more vaccines quicker, uh, in order to roll it out faster? Well, when you're dealing with the mRNA, it would be really difficult, even though theoretically you could use the Defense Production Act, it's very difficult to go to a company who has no experience in making a vaccine, which you know has a lot of complicated aspects to it and say, okay, now you're gonna start making an mRNA vaccine. It's very difficult to do that. What the Defense Production Act can actually be quite helpful is getting things that would amplify the ability to get more doses, namely the dead space needles that we need to get the sixth dose out of the Pfizer vial. At this point, what keeps you up at night? Well, the thing that uh, I would say I take very seriously and in some respects does uh, you know, occupy a good part of my mind is to being something that you just alluded to a little while ago, to make sure that we stay ahead of these mutants as they evolve. And the way to do that is to get as many people vaccinated as quickly as you possibly can. So mutants are always an issue that you have to be concerned about.